Hey Brad and other people who might be watching this, I um, finally got around to taking a look at you know this markup that uh, Brad had put together regarding you know uh, what kind of classes should be put on these uh, elements before having a design actually come in, uh, which for me I, I think is a little bit. Um, out of order. I don't tend to work that way, um, but I understand um, Brad's reasoning for wanting to do that. You know, having a front end developer jump out ahead of any design that might be coming down, you know, with uh, I think a certain expectation of um, what's to come, you know, and a lot of that expectation comes from experience. So when I first took a look at the HTML and I took a look at the classes that he had come up with, I was trying to figure out, you know, essentially getting into his mindset. You know, with any code review that someone does uh, on a project, uh, you, you're really trying to get into the mindset of the other developer. And this is, you know, essentially what I was trying to do. And I, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to figure out what Brad's intentions were, you know, even before design came down. And and so I took a look at the, the classes that he had, and I found it actually really useful to just kind of break them down uh, separately outside of the HTML to just see what the different objects were, um, you know, uh, because from an object-oriented way, um, atomic design way, SMACS way, BEM way, I mean, we're all basically talking about a very similar methodology, um, and that is creating objects. Um, and so when I took a look at the objects that he was creating, uh, you know, we, we've got the, the field object uh, with an, a number of variants and child elements that are associated with that. Uh, we have a checkbox list, we have a checkbox, radio list, and radio. And that, that's pretty much it. So there's, there's not a lot of uh, complexity to this per se. Uh, so, um, you know, what things kind of jump out at me? What are the things that... Um, would concern me. Uh, and so taking a look at the first thing, the the actual field, um, you know, that we have these variants, these, one for each different type of field um, that could appear in there. Uh, and I, I feel like the reasoning why that those variants are there um, actually has to do more with the field input than it does with the field itself. Uh, in other words, that there might be specific styling around each individual uh, element versus um, uh, the container. I, I guess I can't really uh, envision where I would style the the shell around uh, uh, a series of checkboxes differently than I would style those differently than around uh, a bunch of gender. So I, I probably wouldn't have these variants on the field. I'd probably just have the field, right? Um, and then we have the label, we have the input, and we have the note. So when you you know look over um, at the actual visual rep representation of what we have already, we have um, you know the the headings for the label. So I, if it's the checkbox field of the gender, um, Brad is using an actual uh, H four for styling that. Uh, sorry for uh, for marking that up from a semantic perspective, which is fantastic. Um, and then but further on with like the input field or the text area field. Um, those ones are actually just using form labels to um, uh, mark up those things. And so in both of those cases, um, you know, uh, and I've kind of made note of that with within the HTML or the CSS here, you know, if this is what I was actually trying to uh, select, the field label applies to both H4 and label. Um, so, uh, where uh, some of the things kind of jumped out at me that I was a, would be a little concerned about uh, would be the C field input, which is being applied to, in some cases, a UL, in some cases, uh, input text, some cases, a select, in some cases, a text area. Um, and, you know, I, I started thinking about the properties that I would apply to that. Like if I wanted a border around something like the input or the text area, um, that's one thing, um, but I have no way of differentiating the different kinds of inputs. Um, and, uh, and and so basically, I, it's at this point where I think um, I start to differ with regards to how these things are actually, uh, where these classes are applied um, and put together. Now, my experience with um, styling forms is that um, we tend to see certain patterns, right? Um, and so the first thing, the first pattern I wanted to point out was the idea that you have 
uh, sort of a container around something. You've got a the heading, you've got the content, and then you've got the footer. And this is a pattern that I've talked about uh, on my blog before. Um, and this is something that I see here, right? Like if you think of what's the heading? Uh, well, in one case, it is an actual heading. In the other cases, uh, with the like input field and text area field, uh, it's a label, but it's still a heading uh, for that. So we we may want to style that in a specific way. So for example, I, I kind of mocked up some uh, CSS here where we might see this pattern, right? Where we have the uh, headings all aligned to the left. Um, we have the actual content off to the right, and then below that we have uh, the note. Um, and so we can kind of play around with this pattern, um, you know, where we have those individual pieces. Uh, but you'll notice the content, right, is, and the content, when I say about, you know, what the content is, um, in the case of the checkbox field, we have an actual list with uh, three checkboxes um, and the labels that go along with that. Um, same thing with the radio buttons with the input field it's just the input with the text area it's just the text area and with the select it's just the select um where uh so this kind of leads back to where i would probably see things differ where i would actually uh, probably simplify the field to just those three things um so we've got the field we've got the label we've got the input and we've got the note um, um so those three things label input and note representing the, the heading body and, and footer uh, for the body though instead of applying it to a ul an input select or text area actually just applying it to a div like a wrapper a container this generic container that we can put anything in and therefore we can keep uh, the structure of these elements uh, actually exactly the same right like so that that pattern regardless of where what we do with these fields um, and how we lay these out will be exactly the same and um, in which case it actually simplifies a lot of the stuff um, you know we end up in this situation being able to get rid of uh, these four variant classes and our field is just these four things um, it does mean that our HTML would get a little bit more complex because we'd start wrapping uh, all the uh, uh, content areas with with divs uh, but I actually prefer to do that um, because now we have this generic content that we can put in um, which you know in this case yes is actual form elements but if you can imagine what if there was an area where uh, it was uh, actually not form content that it was actually just a paragraph of text but because it's within the form uh, if you can imagine uh, maybe different uh, security access where uh, based on higher or lower security access you don't have access to edit a particular thing so and actually instead of displaying an input you display um, a paragraph of text that maybe explains why their security rights aren't there or that shows the content uh, for something there or displays an image or some other uh, piece of content that that might be relevant to that thing um, so you know that that helps simplify that um, and then then we start getting into the actual content um, so looking at the the, uh, the elements that he has um, sort of the other thing that kind of jumped out at me was the checkbox list checkbox li checks and I'm not going to edit this, so I'm going to leave that in. But check box list and the radio list. Um, you know, those two lists, uh, why are they differentiated? Um, what is special about them in particular? Uh, and then, so in, the, in this case, I, I would say I'd probably be representing these two lists exactly the same. Um, how are these lists different than other lists throughout the website? Um, and so I might, in this case, actually go with a much more generic list and list item uh, and just leave it at that um, however I would also um, you know instead of putting a, a class of list item on every single thing because it's a ULLI pattern uh, we're not going to separate those two um, uh, if this is something that where a list is always going to be on a UL that we have that predictability uh, of HTML and I, that's one thing that um, I, I, I talk about as well is, is you know how predictable is the HTML. If it's predictable, uh, I might actually forego the, the list item class uh, and just have the um, C list LI. Uh, I mean, 
you could argue that, hey, we saved a byte um, since, as you can see, it's one character shorter. Um, although when this compresses, we often remove the white space. It might actually be three bytes smaller. Uh, most people don't quibble over three bytes, um, so hardly much of an argument. Um, but uh, I, I do like the, the simplicity of this, that I don't necessarily have to add as many classes to my HTML. Um, it does increase my um, selector specificity ever so slightly, um, you know, because now instead of just a single class, we have a class and uh, an element selector, which, you know, may come back to bite us um, depending on other stuff that we're doing. Like if we're adding um, states um, or other classes to this, um, then we might run into some issues where a single class selector might have uh, been a little bit better. Um, and experience will kind of tell you when to, to head down this path. Um, but, uh, you know, as a result of doing that, then we kind of simplify things, right? Like, so we've, we've gotten rid of that and now we have, uh, just list checkbox and radio. Uh, but going back to, um, those inputs, um, you know, we, we removed a bunch of classes that, um, probably could have been used for styling, um, very spit like the input, the text area or the select, um, uh, in which case, you know, what what do we necessarily need to put around those? Um, selects, for example, let's say we were doing um, a uh, div around that so that we can do some uh, select replacements. Uh, so we can do our own custom select elements. That's a pretty common pattern. Uh, we might start to see the need to actually create um, a select uh, shell um, and build something around that. Like if we were to look at the um, HTML for that, um, let me go down to the bottom where we have our select. Um, so, you know, I, I talked before about having the uh, div uh, for the um, wrapping the actual content uh, where the uh, input was gonna be, right? So we wrap that content. Um, and so in which case we have our C field input uh, which is our actual content that we put in here. Uh, and then if we have this uh, select box that we're gonna do um, a replacement with where we like hide the select and put something else in place, uh, we might have a wrapper for that as well, where you know, um, in this case, this is gonna be our uh, select, right? Um, so I, I think the only complaint that I tend to get with my approach uh, is that uh, it kind of leads to a bit of this quote-unquote divitis where I start adding divs um, seemingly unnecessarily. Um, and um, I, I don't see them as unnecessary. I think of, of them as simplifying things, like separating concerns. So for example, instead of adding the C select onto the C field input, um, by putting it on its own element. Um, I don't have to worry about those classes, um, uh, any of the properties between those clashing for whatever reason. Um, so I am separating those concerns, uh, but also from a templating perspective. So if I was thinking back to, um, you know, the atomic design or smacks or BEM and, you know, we're, we're looking at, okay, well now we can templatize this stuff. Um, what do our templates look like? Um, and, and for me, that's important. So if, you know, if I'm looking at what an input looks like, or sorry, what the field looks like, if, so a field to me is, um, and I almost forgot to select that, this, right? Like, um, wow, that's a nice little feature. I like the way it wraps. Uh, but I want it to do, um, you know, content, right? So if I, I can actually spit this content in, this is my generic uh, field um, that I can just kind of spit that out um, for uh, for all of these things um, and then with that actual content that I can actually fill that in with the real content that I care about which uh, in this case is the select now uh, again kind of going back to why am I wrapping that with the div um, I'm gonna go back up to um, the uh, radio items, right? So like the checkboxes. Uh, now again, uh, the way that Brad has it, we have the C checkbox uh, on the actual LI. Um, I would, um, you know, if we were looking at one, we got rid of the uh, list, right? So we, we've got the, the C list, 
Um, the field input, of course, uh, was put on a div wrapper. So we've got that in place there. Uh, and again, you know, thinking about why we're doing that, if we need to, from a template perspective, that content um, is easily uh, replaced. Um, so in this case, we've got our list, our content that's going in here. Uh, and of course we have our, our list items. But now again, we'll, we've kind of got two things competing on this one particular element uh, on our LIs. So in here, if I uh, put in a, another div, which is gonna be my content. Um, so in this case, I've got, uh, this is my checkbox. And so obviously I can get rid of this out of here as well. And again, you might ask, well, why did I do that? Again, you know, from the separation of concerns, this is my template. My template is I've got the list object. So I've got the UL and the LIs for my list. And then the actual content uh, is going to be that thing inside. But why necessarily wrap it with a div? Um, I don't necessarily need to, depending on the complexity of my object. Um, but in this case, if, if I was doing replacement of the element and I wanted to have a, a container for doing overflow hidden. Uh, again, this is that pattern that I'm gonna see probably over and over again. And so I will add those div wrappers um, to contain those items. Um, and then, yeah, I can start hiding checkboxes uh, off the canvas um, uh, so that I can put in image replacement. And then I have um, an element in which to do that. Like I can do a before or after. Um, a pseudo element to, to do the styling that I might want in this particular case. So um, I've got a lot of flexibility here um, as well um, to uh, style things as I need to. And that checkbox as well from a template perspective, I like the fact that this div uh, is self-contained. Right, That checkbox before when it was on a list item was no longer self-contained. Um, and so if I just take that LI and I move it out into its own template, it, does it actually render the same uh, from a template perspective uh, when it's separated? Like, have you done all the styles? So um, the reason why I say that, like if I go into C list and I, um, if this was an actual proper selector and I did uh, list style, none. The cascade, um, I don't know, not the cascade, but the uh, inheritance rather uh, of that, means that the list item will pick up the, the, the list style none and remove the, um, uh, the, the bullets outside of every single uh, checkbox or uh, every single item in this list. Um, however, if I take that LI out of there and put it into its own template and render that, those inherited styles don't appear. Um, and therefore, my actual ability to see uh, exactly what's happening isn't there. Um, and so those are some of my concerns there. Um, I know some people when they use, uh, the, the, you know, this can be a bit of a contrived example because, okay, if you're using a CSS reset and in your CSS reset, you remove list down none from everything anyway, then you're not going to necessarily experience this kind of issue. Um, but uh, those are just the kind of things that I'm kind of aware of. Like I, I know that a list item uh, may have some inheritance concerns and I just want to make sure that um, uh, those things are uh, considered for. Anyways, I feel like I've rambled on for a considerable amount of time over uh, a rather uh, straightforward form, but I'm hoping that this was a useful exercise. Um, I kind of like going through these kind of uh, examples, one to demonstrate my thinking um, and how um, that sometimes differs from other people, um, even though we're all kind of taking the same approach. Um, and, uh, and that's why I like, you know, I think over the years I've often thought of uh, all of these things, all of these approaches as being of the same mind, but in reality, you know, you give something to five different teams and you're going to get five different things back. So uh, these are just some of the things that I would consider um, when coding stuff up uh, without a design.